Hey everyone, I've been having a lot of fun over the last couple of weeks riding a new scooter from Hetza. It's called an H5 GT. I've done about 100Ks on it so far, riding in all different conditions. So I feel that it's a good time now to share some thoughts I have on this scooter. Uh, in particular, what I like about it, what I think could be better, and who I think it would be good for. First impressions of the scooter, I, I like it. I like it a lot. It looks really big. Um, it has to be one of the biggest scooters I have tested so far. It looks really sturdy. It looks really aggressive. Um, you can't really miss the quad shocks at the front, uh, the dual shocks at the back, you know, the all-terrain tires, um, lots of shiny red trimmings all over the place, a big deck and quite a big rear footrest as well. If you don't mind people noticing you, uh, when you're riding along, then this thing should be right up your alley. I have been stopped by no less than about a dozen people asking me about the scooter. I gave them a rundown of the scooter, handed over the keys, and um, away they go for a joyride. If you feel like a joyride and you're in Perth, leave a comment and I'll tee up a time and place, uh, and you can have a ride of the scooter anywhere you like. Oh, and I nearly forgot to mention the lights on this thing. There are lots and lots and lots of lights all around. And when I turn it all on, I can't ride anywhere without people looking at me. Let's talk about how this thing is to ride around on different surfaces. Uh, the scooter is going to feel a lot more comfortable than your entry-level scooter. So whether you're using a seat or just you know, standing up, I was a little worried about the solid tires that came with the scooter and whether that would translate to a lot of shock through the handlebars and a lot of shock through my feet. Um, but nope, it felt good. It felt pretty good, um, surprisingly good. On footpaths with lots of cracks and uneven surfaces of about two to three centimeters, I didn't need to slow down at all, so went straight over the top of it. Uh, off road, on the grass, on limestone paths and gravel paths, it was a little uncomfortable through the handlebars. Um, it didn't help as well because the handlebar grips are quite hard as opposed to soft rubber. Um, I think the front quad shocks are a little on the firm side as well. Uh, the rear shocks were fine. If you do most of your riding on the pavement with a little bit of off-road work, you should be fine. It's, um, it's also new. The scooter was only about a week old when I went off-road, so uh, I do expect the shocks to soften up a bit as it gets ridden around for a while. I have to talk about the deck as well. It is huge. It's about 22 centimeters at its widest point and 58 centimeters from front to back. It's not the biggest deck I have seen, but it's it's right up there. You also get another 18 and a half by about 20 centimeters. Um, in the rear footrest, so there should be plenty of space for guys and girls with really big feet to um, put their feet on. It's got some serious ground clearance going for it, uh, about 17 to 18 centimeters, which is close to double your typical entry level scooter ground clearance. Uh, if you've been riding scooters for a while, you know how annoying it is to smack the bottom of the scooter getting on and off the curb, so uh, yeah, there's no issues here. This thing comes with a seat as well, if you're into that sort of thing. I personally like to stand, but uh, each to their own. Um, the only reason I like to stand is because when I sit down on a scooter, it looks a little bit dorky. And I have been uh, told by a number of people at my workplace that uh, it's not a good look. So, so for me personally, for my own ego, I do like to stand. But if you do like the comfort of having uh, somewhere to sit down while you're riding um, for quite a while, then by all means, the seat is reasonably comfortable. I rode about 20 k's through some really rough pavement and footpaths, and um, I don't think these pavements and footpaths were meant for 10-inch wheels, but the seat was actually fine. The seat has a little bit of suspension in it as well, and it's quite big and it's quite soft, so. Um, so if you do like having a seat, then this thing is actually actually pretty good. One of the advantages of this thing being so big 
um, long and heavy with some really stiff front suspension is the stability. Uh, I had I had no issues at all at high speed, uh, no issues with turning and no issues with cornering this thing. It was just um, yeah, it was just great. Uh, no issues at all for me. I think I think it helps quite a fair bit that it has nice and wide handlebars that are height adjustable as well. Uh, if you are thinking about getting a scooter, choose something with a wide handlebar. Uh, to me, it just feels more more stable at speed. The stem, the stem did have some wobble to it, but nothing that is more or less than any other scooters on the market with this type of design. Riding at night time on a scooter is not something that I like to do. Um, but riding at night time with this scooter was was okay. You get about 8 meters from the front headlights, which is miles better than any entry level scooter you can find. Uh, but it's not as good as some setups with 4 or more lights. Uh, we got lots of lights all around as well, on the sides and on the back. Uh, so it's easy for cars, cyclists and pedestrians to spot me riding at night time. Uh, the brake lights, the brake lights are synced with the brake levers. So as soon as you squeeze the brake levers, the brake lights comes on, which is a really nice little feature. Um, the electric horn, it works, it works well, but I find it to either amuse or annoy pedestrians when I use it. So I prefer to just say, uh, you know, hello, passing on your right, thanks, as, uh, as I go past them. The feedback I got from my group of testers is very similar to mine. I am about 75 kilograms and about 90 kilograms if I carry a lot of gear with me. Uh, those that are heavier than me will find the suspension great. It didn't bottom out at all for them like a lot of the other scooters. Those who are lighter than me thinks it's a bit on the stiff side. Uh, you can't really please everyone um, unless you have adjustable suspension. But overall, there were no complaints. Everyone seemed to like the ride stability. Um, we were all worried about the solid tires, but, um, but we all got on board pretty quickly. It's just nice to not have to worry about glass and nails on the road. And um, around the area that I ride, unfortunately, I've seen quite a fair bit of that stuff um, everywhere. Performance is where this scooter uh, can improve on a bit. Um, acceleration is just okay. It, um, it's got a lot of weight to move and the rolling resistance of the solid tires also become a factor here. Uh, on a full charge, I think it is good enough for most people, but it would be nice to get something to move just a bit quicker. Don't get me wrong, uh, when you compare it to an entry level scooter, this thing is going to be a lot quicker than that. But uh, in the twelve hundred, you know, thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred dollar price range, I think it could run a bit, a bit quicker. It does have an adequate motor. I mean, the motor is rated to run at about eight hundred watts and uh, sixteen hundred watts um, maximum if it needs to. But uh, but the guys at Hersa went down a really, really conservative path and they chose a sixteen amp controller. So the most power that this motor could ever draw is just a touch under 800 watts. What this means is that the motor is unlikely to ever, ever, ever overheat. It will probably outlast the rest of the scooter, but it's just not a performance beast. It's, it's, it's just about on par with most of the scooters you get in this price range. Another area where you may find it needs a bit more juice is climbing up hills. I tried getting up a hill that is classified by Google as very steep. Uh, so in terms of a gradient, it's probably about 35%. You know, and uh, no, no good. <laughs> I ended up walking up that hill. Um, I mean, in all fairness to this thing, a lot of scooters on the market couldn't get up that hill either. Uh, any other hills, I am, I'm fine. Uh, speed ends up being about you know 20 21 kilometers on some you know gentle hills and it drops down to about 16 kilometers an hour on some of the moderate hills 
which I think is just fine. It's uh, it's definitely a lot faster than I, than I can ride a bike up a hill. Uh, top speed, top speed should be enough for most people. We are capped here in WA to 25 kilometers per hour, uh, but on private roads, I can get this thing up to about 37 kilometers on a flat, according to the GPS. If I had a bit more track to play with, then I think I can probably get it close to 40 kilometers per hour. If anyone is interested, I can hire a racetrack near the Perth airport and we can all go and turn off the public mode on these scooters and test the scooter's speed. Um, I don't think there is any need to go that fast on public roads. I think it's just a bit too dangerous for me personally and a bit too dangerous for pedestrians. So staying to 25 kilometers per hour is, is probably the best way to go. Uh, but it is nice to know that on private roads, off-road, this thing can well and truly exceed the 25 kilometers per hour. The range on this thing is fine. It is more than fine, actually. I tried to do a range test on mode 1, which is 15 kilometers per hour. After an hour, I, I gave up. I really, really gave up. I just got bored and it's just... The battery voltmeter started at 54.5 and after an hour and 15 kilometers it ended up being about 52.1 and uh, I ended up at my local fast food joint eating chicken and chips. Uh, the battery meter didn't move at all. It didn't move at all from full. Um, so traveling 15 kilometers per hour for an hour is, is just not fun. Um, I could be riding this scooter around in circles for hours and hours and hours and I still think the battery is going to be full. Uh, at full speed with hills, uh, really steep hills, you know, really fast acceleration, etc. I managed to drain the battery and get about 36 kilometers out of it. Uh, normal riding a mode 2, I could probably get about 50 odd kilometers, which should be plenty for most people. When I get a chance, I will do a proper range test on full to empty. Uh, probably on mode 2, I won't do mode 1 again. Um, but I'm going to need you know, a couple of hours for that. Braking is, braking is really good considering the weight of this thing. Anyone with a single brake scooter moving up to dual brakes will notice a considerable improvement in braking performance. Uh, 25 kilometers per hour to stand still is just a touch under 3 meters, which I think is pretty decent. Uh, if you turn the scooter and try to skid it to stop, you may get less than that, uh, but I don't recommend that unless you know what you are doing. Build quality. Build quality is actually pretty decent, and uh, before I talk about the specific scooter, uh, I just want to have a chat about Hetza. Um, what I found out is that they've been selling uh, electric scooters and bikes in Europe and the US under the Hitway and Evercross brands for, for some time now. They are new to Australia, but they are definitely not new to making uh, electric scooters and electric bikes and etc. It, it does look like they have taken some things that they have learned from the overseas markets and uh, release a product in Australia that is uh, that is pretty decent, but it is not not perfect yet. I pop the scooter open and everything is assembled well. The battery and controller is held down pretty well. It's got some nice foam padding in there to protect it, and overall it's pretty decent compared to some other scooters that I have uh, tested in the past. There's also a lot of space there as well, so if you want to upgrade the battery at some stage in time, it should, it should accommodate larger batteries pretty easily. There were some minor issues that I noticed, um, nothing to be overly concerned about, but I should mention them. Some of the group members noticed holes at the front uh, compartment where the silicon didn't cover it up perfectly. These holes were intended at one stage in time to put in jockey wheels to help the scooter move around when it's folded up. Uh, but uh, the guys at Hetsa decided against installing those uh, jockey wheels. It's no big deal as it really doesn't have any effect on the scooter. But if you are interested in popping in some jockey wheels, the holes are there. Uh, the battery meter is a little inaccurate as well. 
but most electric scooters out there have some strange battery meters as well so it's nothing to be overly concerned about if you do want to check how much range you have left just check the voltmeter and, and you should be fine uh, the battery the battery is capable of taking a dual charger it has two charging ports but uh, the scooter came packaged with only one charger I um I always like dual chargers as I find people will be less likely to leave a charger on overnight if it charges quicker uh, on a single charger I get from empty to full in about uh, 9 to 10 hours a quick a quick mention about the stem as well the stem wobbled just a little bit it wobbled just a little bit uh, no more or no less than any other scooter that has a telescopic handle uh, I also noticed that after riding on rough pavements etc for a while I do need to tighten the nuts uh, etc uh, but this is normal for scooters uh, some people in my group put super glue on these nuts to hold them in place so they don't have to continually tighten them uh, but I, I wouldn't recommend it just in case you need to remove the nuts at some later stage in time to service your scooter I did have some issues with the front brakes rubbing uh, when the scooter came straight out of the box. If you are buying an electric scooter, it's very important that you know how to uh, adjust the brakes. It's a very important maintenance item. It wasn't too hard for me to adjust these brakes. Um, they're not hydraulic brakes, so it's quite simple. Uh, it does require a bit of knowledge though, so if you do need to know how to adjust your brakes uh, or need some advice just reach out and uh, put something in the comment section after sales support is fine from the guys at Hetzer uh, they were very quick to attend to any queries I had and uh, I did get a chance to get some insights into the after sales support and it was pretty decent uh, the guys are located in Melbourne so it can get a little tricky getting support if you are in other states um, but their warehouse has got a lot of lot of spare parts um, so they're, they're very well prepared they, I don't think they have had to uh, use a lot of the spare parts but if you manage to break something or, or get water in anything then um, yeah, they have plenty of spare parts that they can just post to you so overall not too bad uh, final thoughts on the build quality of this scooter I think it's a pretty pretty solid scooter for me I have put it through quite a lot of rough riding and uh, it's been ridden by at least a dozen people and um, so far no issues at all it's uh, it hasn't really got anything broken uh, I have had to adjust the nuts every now and then but um, yeah nothing broken yet so pretty good moving on to overall thoughts and uh, and who I think this scooter is for um, the people at Hetza have, in my opinion, I think they've put everything they could think of into this scooter and uh, and it shows. This thing is really big and it's really heavy. <laughs> it does fold up well and it does fit inside the back of most cars quite easily but it's not my first option if you are constantly popping scooters in and out of the trunk of a car or lifting it up and down stairs. If you are into doing this type of stuff there are better lighter options out there um, if you regularly do longer trips with your scooter and want something that is a little bit more rugged that you don't have to worry about um, too much in terms of things going wrong you know tires getting flat etc then I think that I think the H5 GT is, is worth having a look at but I would also seriously consider its smaller sibling the H5 Pro which is a couple of hundred dollars cheaper. It's uh, slightly smaller, slightly uh, lighter, more manageable, more practical. And uh, it does most of the things the GT does as well. If you can wait, I'm very excited about the next version of the H5 GT that will be in Australia in probably a few months time. Um, the new version, the performance is going to be a big improvement on the current model. And uh, I think they've also jacked up the battery as well to 20 amps, and they're going to throw in, you know, a dual a dual charger, and I'm sure there are going to be plenty of uh, other improvements as well. 
if they do manage to keep the price about the same at twelve ninety nine, including shipping, um, which I, I think they might be struggling to do that. But if they do manage to keep that price the same, uh, I think it might end up being one of the best scooters available in in that price range by a very very long way. If you are looking for an upgrade from your entry level scooter and you don't live in areas with very steep hills, um, then the current model H5 GT scooter is still a really decent option. There's plenty to like about this scooter. Uh, it's built very solidly and you get a lot of scooter for your money. It's currently selling for $1,299 including shipping from Hetz's website. Uh, but there is a discount code in the description which will bring it down to $1,200 including shipping. Uh, if you think this scooter is right for you, then go to the description and you'll find a link to Hetz's website. I, I do not get paid for doing this review, uh, so this review is unbiased. It's based on my opinion and the opinion of a number of other testers who have used this product over the last few weeks. Um, whether you buy it or whether you don't buy it, I don't get a commission, so I don't get paid either way. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions on what scooter I should review next, uh, please leave a comment and I will get to it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.